Okay. All right, today what we're going to talk about is naming ionic compounds that form more than one charge. Typically, when you look at the periodic table, transitional metals or the D-block elements, iron, cobalt, copper, for example, they form more than one charge. So when naming ionic compounds that involve those metals, you have to distinguish them by using Roman numerals in parentheses that indicate what the charge of those are. For example, iron. Iron can form a 3 plus or a 2 plus. So we have to distinguish between the two different ions. Iron 3 plus is written as iron, parentheses, Roman numeral 3, and iron 2, same process except there's a Roman numeral 2. <clears throat> what we're going to do today is show an example of when iron 2 bonds with the phosphate polyatomic ion, PO4, 3 negative. So what we're going to do here is the cation is always written first. So Fe2+, plus, or iron 2, and phosphate are going to get together and bond ionically, and they want to be electrically neutral. So there's a simple method that I use when teaching this. It's called the crisscross method. And what you do is you take the absolute value of the ion's charge, and you simply cross it over as a subscript of the other ion. So iron's 2 charge is a 2 subscript for phosphate, and phosphate's 3 becomes the subscript for iron. So if we write this over, we have Fe3, 3 iron atoms, and we have 2 phosphates, and we have to indicate that in parentheses. So the formula for this compound would be Fe3 parentheses PO42. The name of this would be called iron parentheses Roman numeral 2 because we're dealing with iron 2, not iron 3 phosphate. And this is called the crisscross method when naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds.